time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. And you know just where it's at. Right down there. Right down there. And it's time to follow my Instagram. That's Geekly Amanda. G-E-E-K-L-Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Follow me there too. And it's time to get the series review started. So today on Netflix, a new series drops called Jupiter's Legacy, based off of a comic book by the same name, and it stars Josh Domal and Leslie Biss. The series follows like superheroes. It's a superhero series, but it has a neat little twist. The twist is, you know, these superheroes are kind of humanized. I mean, you watch them grow old. You you see them, you know, their flaws. They have families and, and struggle with parenting and even, you know, face death in the face. I mean, talk about a twist to the superhero kind of series. And first, let me give you a little rundown of exactly what it's about. Netflix's Jupiter's Legacy follows the story of the world's first superheroes who received their powers in the 1930s. In the present day, they are revered elder guard, but their super-powered children struggle to live up to the legendary feats of their parents. Now, as I said, I love this spin for a superhero kind of series. I mean, we rarely get to see superheroes that are not perfect, you know, that, that have all these flaws and struggle with them and grow old. When have you seen like a gray-haired superhero like never, <laughs> you know? But what really stands out in this was not only, you know, the flawed superheroes, but, you know, they have kids and their kids have these superhero powers. So you see these kids with superhero powers also struggle, you know, to not only live up to like their parents' legacy, but also kind of make their own way in the world. You know, this is a new generation of superheroes and they're going to do things different. And, you know, it's kind of this struggle trying to follow in their parents' footsteps, but also, you know, stand out on their own and live by a certain code that they always live by. As far as action goes, the action scenes in this series are outstanding. I mean, it felt like a big budget production with their action scenes. You know, not only, you know, from the costume designs and, and the CGI effects, but I mean, it was also pretty hardcore, bloody. And, you know, it, it goes there. It goes there sometimes where your draw, your jaw will drop. You will have to pick it up the floor and you'll be like, what just happened? What just happened? I mean, it, it, the action will give you and the fight scenes will give you some twists and turns that I I didn't see coming. I liked the acting in this. I really did. I mean, you have Josh Dumont who plays the utopian, who's the, you know, the, the big guy. He's the, he's the number one superhero of the superheroes there, kind of. Uh, remind me of like a Superman kind of guy. So, the, you know, he, he does outstanding in that. But he also kind of looks the part. Because this series, it skips around in time. It goes from past for when before they got their superhero powers to like present day. So you, he also has that look. Like, you know, the younger look when they go back in the past. But at times I had to keep reminding myself. I'm like, he's not really this old. But just not only having the look of the oldness. But, you know, exuding that that wisdom that comes with age does a great job. But I'm gonna tell you my favorite character was Leslie Bibb who played, you know, Lady Liberty, the wife of the Utopian, not only, you know, for the girl power and, and her storylines, but I also like where they just took her character. You know, the direction she has taken in, especially, you know, at the times where you know, couples don't always agree. And so it's those times when she disagreed with the Utopian and they had that kind of struggle within each other that, I mean, it really stood out because like I said, life isn't perfect and, and superheroes aren't perfect. They have flaws and I think this show, show does a great job at just humanizing them. But where this exceeds is in the character development of like the superhero children and supervillains children. Yes, they have supervillains and their children and, you know, really taking a look at the, the kids, uh, like I said before, they, they're trying to make their own way in the world uh, under the spotlight of their superhero parents. But also, you know, you know they're going to take different directions. I mean, you have the son 
you know, Brandon Sampson, who's the son of the Utopian and Lady Liberty, and, and he wants to kind of follow in those superhero steps, but he also has this, this internal struggle of living up to their legacy. They also have a daughter, Chloe, who has some, uh, I mean, I'm talking about badass superhero powers, but you know, she was like, I don't want to be a part of this superhero world, right? I don't want to be a part, I want to, she goes off and be like a model celebrity, Far away from the superhero power. Don't really want superhero world. Don't really want nothing to do it. I mean, that just, it reminds me, you know, the superhero children. A lot of like children of celebrities these days where they're constantly watched under like the microscope of the public. That's what this reminded me. Series isn't perfect by any means. Like I really struggled with the first half of it. I had to brute force that first half. I think it's a mixture of like, it was just kind of slow paced gave a lot to character development, but also you get confused at times because, you know, they're jumping back and forth in time from present day and what's going on to also before time and and how they acquired their superhero powers and the events that happened before then, which I mean, is needed. You know, the backstory of this and the character development is part of making the show, but it makes it drag. Although I'm happy I, I broke, you know, was brunt force through that first half because the second half really made it worthwhile, especially like the last two episodes. You know, it was, I was over there just glued to the screen those last two and it ended on a cliffhanger where you're like, oh yeah, they're going to have a season two. They're going to have a season two. Is this show okay for kids to watch? Well, you know how I do it. Let's take a look at the parents' guide and what parents have to look out for. As far as language, they have their profanity throughout this series. They have the S word, the B word, the GD word, and there was one F word. Only one though. I was like, because I kept watching, waiting to hear the F word, hadn't said it, and there's towards the end, I was like, oh, there they dropped the F word. <laughs> so, I mean, there's some, you know, language that you're going to look out for this one. Sexual content and nudity. Nudity wasn't too bad. I mean, they had some shots where there was like partial nudity. You really didn't see anything, but you can tell they didn't have like the clothes on. They did have sexual, you know, content where you saw characters full on going at it. And even there was a scene where like a character was kind of masturbating on the bed and everything. And you're like, whoa, what were they just doing? So, I mean, there's that you're going to run across some sexual content in this. Heavy, heavy kissing and making out scenes. But probably the biggest thing is the violence. As you can imagine, and as I described the action and fight scenes, they don't play around. It's bloody, it's gory, they they have guns, they shoot, they, they some people murder, there's death, yes. So the violence is one of those where you're gonna see a lot of it. It's gonna be kind of brutal at times, hardcore. But also, you know, it could be a little, triggering for kids that kind of like just look up to the superheroes and then see some of these flawed more like you know superheroes really you know go at it <laughs> they don't play around they some of them don't hold back and and that's what's kind of shocking in this so you know the violence is the big one like i said i am glad i got into it i am ready for a season two you know that that cliffhanger at the end you're like season two is going to bring it this Season one really led up, gave you the backstory, gave you the characters, led up to some awesomeness, ended on some awesomeness. Now I'm like, oh, bring it all on now, season two. Bring it all on. I'm ready for it. I enjoyed it. I did. You know, it's on Netflix now today. And if you already seen it or excited to see it, let me know. Comment down below. Comments, thumbs, and all that. Until next time. Mwah.